Hi, Monica King here. Uh, whew, man, I had a strange request for a bee removal, um, and I don't normally drive this far to uh, do one, but it was a situation where I, I felt that I needed to go in and help a gentleman out with the bees. So it was literally a two hour, over a two hour drive one way to get there. Um, the situation was uh, the landowner was attacked by a what he thought was an open air uh, honeybee hive, established hive that he had said was uh, significantly, um, you know, so, something that he could tell, you know, has been working really um, more actively, I guess, in the last six months. So he was like, you know, somehow um, it was hanging underneath a trailer and that had, had been, you know, not being used. And he had to go through a gate right next to it. And the bees attacked um, over a hundred stings. Luckily he's okay. So um, I said, okay, I will come up. I feel bad. You know, whenever somebody goes through this type of experience, um, you know, I feel really bad for the person who, but this is like a learning experience. You cannot allow them to get that big in, in this area. Um, we have Africanized bees. I mean, they're unpredictable and they attack in huge numbers. So uh, with that said, I made it up there. Dan went with me, my husband, and um, we saw some dove hunters and we stopped to let them know that we're gonna be doing this live bee removal that, and they are, you know, known to be defensive. And so the first group of hunters we stopped at, um, they're like, oh yeah, we got stung by those yesterday. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so you know who they are and where they're at, just try to stay out of that area for us. You know, we're gonna be, um, and I normally do live bee removals at night for safety and containment. But this was supposed to be in an area where there is no people, no neighborhood, and I figured that I could start working on it uh, during daylight hours. So that's what I wanted to do. And so I thought, well, I'm going to just warn everybody, basically leave the area or take the possibility of having a bee come around. So um, then we saw another group of uh, dove hunters and with dogs and kids and everything like that. And so we drove up to um, them. And Africanized bees, I've seen them attack up to like 200 yards away. So we just really wanted everybody to be aware of what's going on um, and to be prepared, be ready to jump in their truck and get out of there. So um, we went up to this group and this older gentleman, he said he was like 70 plus or something like that, showed me his hand and his hand was swollen. And he goes, oh yeah, I know about those bees. Um, I sprayed them the last two days. Oh my goodness. Sprayed them with what? Wasp and hornet spray. <laughs> well, no wonder they're pissed off. That's what they do. You spray them and you're not getting the hive. Wasp and hornet spray is not meant for honeybees and it makes them angry. He was so proud of himself. He said he knocked down half of them. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I was like, and of course I was upset. I tried to hold my cool. Um, I just drove two hours to go and remove this hive alive. And somebody's telling me they sprayed them. Okay, so here we go. Oh. So as you can tell by those photos, um, we, uh, it was a gigantic, um, really old fuel tank that had been sitting on a flatbed trailer and the trailers, the tongue up front 
had um, heavy plate steel underneath it and the bees were up in a hole in the plate steel. Literally what was hanging down was just what we call bearding. It was a huge hive. It was a lot older than six months. Um, the comb and everything basically told me it was probably be, uh, between a year to two years old, at least. Um, more than likely sent off multiple swarms um, since it had established. And so that gentleman that sprayed the wasp and hornet killer actually only got part of the worker bees that were hanging down. That's it. So they were on the ground dead, I saw them. And um, so I proceeded in removing um, a bunch of honey and um, brood and everything that was still fine. Uh, he did not hit the hive at all. Um, just killed a bunch of bees and made them mad. So imagine smelling a chemical right outside your front door when you have to go come and go and it just pisses you off. You're just like, that stinks. You know, this is horrible. Um, it's making me, you know, it's just horrible. You know, you don't want it. And it makes you mad. It makes these bees mad and it makes them really super defensive to the point where they're going to attack anybody coming around because they're blaming everybody for this. So even if they were just by genetics already defensive, this pissed them off even more and made them turn into this extremely, extremely dangerous entity. I mean, imagine thousands. So literally Dan and I removed about 15,000 bees from this hive and about, um, it, it just, it was remarkable. It was a very interesting hive. Um, but so let's take this wasp and hornet spray. I have a spectricide here for an example, and it doesn't have anything on there about honeybees. It just says wasp and hornet killer. And I don't know if people just don't know the difference or if they just think that this is gonna work, but this is not something you can safely apply to honeybee hive, and it is not something that's gonna kill them. This is a contact killer, so only the bees that you hit are gonna die. The rest of them that live are gonna search you out <laughs> and try to sting you. I am sorry, that's just what happens. So why? This is a paper wasp nest. It's hanging in one of my trees. Hangs by this little thing here and that's it. So when you spray this, and this is why it says wasp and hornet. When you saturate this down from your, you know, 27 foot jet spray, um, you're hitting the entire nest. Honeybees don't build like this. You are not going to kill a honeybee nest by spraying the entrance with a contact killer. You're going to make them super, super mean. I just hate it. it it's horrible. Um, these bees are recuperating. I've got them out in my apiary. Um, they're not very happy, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm feeding them all kinds of good things and hoping that they're gonna be okay. Um, but uh, I just want, this is something I needed to uh, show. And I'm hoping that anytime that you have a friend that says, I'm gonna go out and kill these bees. I'm gonna do it at night and I'm gonna use the wasp and hornet killer. And then the next morning they go out and the bees are trying to attack them and stuff. Um, let's try a little education first. Um, this does not work for honeybees. In fact, let's go check out the RAID website about wasp and hornet killer and see what they have to say about honeybees. Okay, I'm visiting the RAID website. And the last time I was on here was back in 2017. And actually right on the wasp and hornet spray page was information about honeybees. But since 2017, they moved it under the education tab. 
So as we scroll down, they've got a pretty nice little website set up here that, you know, how to identify the wasp. And we're just gonna kind of scroll, scroll, scroll until we get to the part about honeybees because they did keep it in here. So is it a bee or a wasp? So just real quickly, this is again on the RAID website. Bees are typically hairy while wasps, hornets, and yellow jackets are not. They're also much more docile and are extremely beneficial to us as pollinators. Wasp, hornet, and yellow jacket nest are made of paper, while bumblebees and honeybees build their nest or hives from a waxy substance that they secrete from their abdomens. Honeybees typically build their nest in hollow trees, but they can sometimes be found in wall cavities. Bumblebees usually build their nest in protected areas such as an abandoned rodent den or thick grass. Most outdoor bee colonies can be ignored without ever becoming an issue. If they must be removed, we recommend contacting a beekeeper to do it safely and properly. Okay, so on the RAID website, they mentioned um, most honeybee nests can be ignored. Ugh. Um, no at least not in Southern Arizona, uh, we have Africanized bees. They're unpredictable. Ignoring them and not removing them uh, could potentially become a very hazardous situation, especially to children and pets um, or anybody who has um, got some disability where they can't get away very quickly um, or even to a very healthy individual. Cause um, I mean, just read the papers check out the news, um, what could happen. Um, and all of these incidences usually, usually can be totally prevented with just a little education. Um, so even though they do mention honeybees on the RAID website, it's still not quite um, true for our area. Um, they're only talking about the European honeybee. They are not taking into consideration that some people are running into the Africanized hybrid honeybee um, who can get into some serious trouble. Um, with that said, that's where we're at. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, share, and we've got all kinds of fun things coming up. Thanks for watching.